Hello, I'm Atsubo George, and today is Friday. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, this has been one serious week. Praise <laughs> God. Yeah, because because these things are so important. And I'm trying to get your mind to one thing. Remove all the barriers that exist in your mind between you and the Holy Spirit. And let the Holy Spirit gain free access to you. Praise God. Before, before we go into today's broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready? Now we're calling for daily bread for the whole weekend. You should not lack this weekend. It's got none, none, none. It doesn't matter what's happening in the state. It doesn't matter what's happening in your economy, in your nation. Hey, listen. No lack for you. Praise God. Are you ready? Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, so we've been talking about the rain when the rain comes, and then we're looking at things that hinder you from walking in the fullness of the benefit that the rain brings. So religion becomes a problem. So you have me make a statement like the Bible can become a problem. Now, because in our minds now take this seriously and if you don't watch it the bible can become an idol <laughs> yes someone says god have given us his word as though i i heard a preacher say this one time that the holy spirit was the one that inspired the writings of paul you know so more like the holy ghost took over his hand he actually explained it graphically like that but the holy spirit took the hand of paul and was writing those epistles now you see that's how men have elevated. now those those epistles those writings are letters paul was writing to his partners that Paul was writing to the brethren where he had preached to before just to encourage them like we do today you see that now so if I write a book today on a subject and I say this is scripture someone say how can you say this is scripture? how can you elevate your revelation to be scripture okay what is wrong with that? No, you can't, you can't elevate yours. The, the, the scripture is complete. How complete? So, you know, I shared this one time. I said, the, and, 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 and this is where we need to examine things properly, you see. The revelations of Apostle Paul, right? They are Apostle Paul's revelations. And he brought forth the quality or richness of his fellowship with Jesus. He brought it to us. But then it doesn't mean that Jesus only gave us light through his eyes. Now that's where the church will be making a big blunder to think Apostle Paul is the end. Of revelation now before Apostle Paul came up the church was going on men were receiving wisdom from the Lord it didn't mean Apostle Paul was the only one that received wisdom from the Lord and 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 understand also that Apostle Paul was greatly influenced by a man named Barnabas understand these things so because we don't have Barnabas' writings, whether we don't have it, maybe it exists and we don't have them, doesn't mean that Barnabas had no wisdom at all. So if we believe that the Holy Spirit can inspire Apostle Paul, what stops you from believing that the Holy Spirit can inspire you today? Are you getting the picture now? So 
So what do we do? How do we judge? Because now, can anybody come up and say, the Holy Spirit told me so, so, and so, and we all must believe him. No, you don't have to all believe him. There is a witness of the Holy Spirit in us. Why did the disciples, for example, Barnabas was very close to Paul. And then later we find Peter um, visiting Paul. And they had a relationship. And even in the book of Galatians, Paul wrote and said how he had to rebuke Peter. You remember that story? Because Peter's actions were wrong. Okay? Now, the same thing. Peter um, was a traditional man. And you know what I mean by that? He was a Jewish man. And before people came from James, now that's how the Bible puts it. That's how Paul put it. Before people came from James, Peter was free, eating and enjoying with the disciples. But the moment people came from James, Paul noticed that Peter withdrew from the disciples. And then he realized that even Barnabas caught the bug. <laughs> See, so he, he wondered. Now, Paul stayed with these people. Paul and Barnabas, they stayed with these people. They eat with them, eat their food, play with them go out preaching with them peter came i was enjoying the fellowship but then some people came with james see what i'm i was telling you now because peter was scared that they would take a report now not because peter was doing anything wrong but perception was his problem peter felt these people i know them they will go back and tell the story in a different light so you see, even in that day, you had myopic, myopic Christians who still insist that the Jewish tradition must be kept. Now, what they did not understand is the church has evolved. You see what I'm sharing with you? So just like it happened to Peter, I took the Holy Ghost to break that barrier and move him to the Gentiles. Now, I believe after that, Peter just knew that, look, life is bigger than what we think. One encounter with the Holy Spirit brought that understanding to him. Now, they were supposed to be trained or taught the same way. But hey, these people are believers like us. What difference? Why can't we eat with them? Why can't we fellowship with them? You see? So Peter began to withdraw. Paul said, he looked at the whole situation and said, ah, no, nah, no, nah, no, nah. this is wrong. Hey, Peter, you are doing the wrong thing. You're being a hypocrite. You see? So, but, but Peter accepted Paul because he believed in him. Barnabas accepted Paul because he believed in him. Now, you know, they later had a disagreement over um, uh, uh, another believer, John Mark, and that caused a separation. Now, would you now say that that separation was sanctioned by the Holy Spirit? You see, another thing they did. Now they had that disagreement. Should should John Mark go with us or not? No. Paul's, Paul's argument was he left us on the way in the first journey. So we shouldn't give him room to function in the second journey. Now that itself is against the things Paul teaches. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now Barnabas insisted that no, he may have failed before, but come on, let's give him another opportunity. I mean, God is a God of opportunities, see? And Paul said, no, the guy can bring us disappointment. Barnabas said, no, I'm not gonna leave one sheep behind. Tells you the heart he had. Remember, he did the same thing with Paul. I'm talking about Barnabas now. When the disciples would not accept Paul, he took Paul by the hand. Now, when Paul began to preach with Barnabas, who are you now? I mean, come on now. Praise God. You understand? Barnabas took Paul by the hand. Imagine if he had left him. Only God knows where Paul would have been with all his revelations. But Barnabas took him by the hand and said, come, I will take you in the midst of the disciples. And he took the, oh, we are going for this crusade. Let's go together. Oh, I'm going to preach. Okay. I just imagine. In my one hour of preaching, he will preach. He will preach for 20, 30 minutes. And say, let me give my brother here, brother Paul, to share, you know, some things with you. And Paul comes up. <coughs> you know, the Lord 
Ah, he began to push Paul. He began, now that's the kind of nature of Barnabas heart. So when, when it came to John Mark, he was just doing the same thing he does. Strengthen the brethren. But Paul said no. And he said, well, if you insist, he doesn't go with us. I can't leave him. And Paul said, okay, if you insist, he'll go with you. We can go together. All right, no problem then. He will go with me. Okay, let me find another brother. I'll go with Silas. And that division took place. Now, why didn't they pray? Why didn't they pray? Why didn't they say, okay, you know what? Why are we arguing? Can we just spend time and pray and find out from the Lord if, if Mark should go with us or not? Why didn't they do that? Now, when you read that kind of thing, you learn from it. You don't start saying, after all, Paul and Barnabas had to separate because of John Mark. So if we're separating today, it means nothing. You're wrong. You're wrong. You look at that situation and you tell yourself, I think they did something wrong here. Both of them. Now, I personally believe, now I'm not saying the Lord told me this one now. I personally believe that if Barnabas, because see the devil, I call it Shiba. You see the devil. He, he is too crafty. And whenever you see strife brewing, whenever you see brothers separating from themselves, see, looking into what is the cause of the argument is secondary. The first thing you need to find out is these two people, what is the mind of God concerning them? As long as it is strife, now we can expand without strife. We, we can split without strife. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. The work can be so much and then we look at it and say, you know what, this work is getting too much. We can't both be going to the same place at the same time. So why don't you take this way and I'll take this way. Oh yeah, then, then once in, in a year, we gather together and we compare notes. Oh, that's fantastic. That's still a split. But when the split is as a result of strife, Watch it. The devil is up to something. So I'll say, I personally believe that if Barnabas had been in Paul's life, he wouldn't have made that trip to Jerusalem. I believe so. He wouldn't. Because now you, you may sit down and say, oh, that is how he was able to write letters. It restricted Paul's ministry for many years. Paul was in prison from that Jerusalem trip for many, many years. Don't tell me that did not restrict his ministry. Because we have his letters today, we are comforted with that. But what about how much work he would have done? In prison, you can't do much work. Are you getting what I'm saying? And, and probably, no, let me not say that because you misunderstand me. Praise <laughs> God. See? So he, he, he was confined in prison for many years. While Barnabas and the rest were preaching the gospel around the world, because we don't know their works, doesn't mean they don't have works. Now that's why I said, open your mind up. There is much more the Lord have done. There is much more the Lord is doing today. So now they, they accepted Paul because someone was able to stand in faith with him. And in no time, this guy who they all knew used to be uh, a troubler to the Christians became their friend. They accepted him. They gave him the right hand of fellowship. How did that happen? Someone who had faith believed in him. It's the same thing that happens today. We, we, instead of standing together, we bastardize oursel ourselves. Because someone preaches a message, you will not take time to go and understand. You just take that message on the surface. And run with it and say, it's wrong. But I'll tell you something. We are supposed to be trusting one another. You remember on Monday I shared with you Paul speaking to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3. 
It says, having a form of godliness, and, but denying the power thereof. Now we must believe in one another that there is the power that is in the gospel. And if you are preaching the gospel, I shouldn't be waiting for your downfall. I should be looking at you and said, as long as you're preaching the gospel, this gospel you preach is backed by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will correct you and arrange your life. I should have enough faith in you for that. As long as you are preaching the gospel, my own is to make sure you're preaching the gospel. So where are you getting your message from? Is it by reading books and studying? Or is it by spending time with the Lord? If you tell me by reading books and, and, and studying, you will get into error very soon. It's as simple as that. Doesn't matter how many years, you will surely get into error. But if you tell me you spend time with the Lord and you receive words from Him, then I know I have faith in you. Because the one you spend time with, you will grow. You will grow. And the things that are like excesses today, you see, you will come to maturity. That's the power of the gospel. So we don't take a form of godliness and say, this is how it should be. And then we deny the power thereof. No, the gospel has power. For therein is the power of God revealed from faith to faith. It's the, it's, 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 I, I, I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God unto salvation. It is the power of God that brings about salvation. So as you are, even as a preacher, salvation is still at work in you. As long as you are preaching the gospel, see that thing you're preaching carries power. And I'm looking at you and I'll see the power transforming you. And I'll say the power of church. You're looking at the people you're preaching to. But as preachers, we must look at one another. Not look to correct one another. Now, if you, if you see someone who says, before you think of correcting him, try to find out the source of his information. Where did you get that from? Ah, I was reading a book. Uh -huh. Which book? Uh -huh. Okay. Where did you get that from? Ah, I was fellowshipping with the Lord and, and see the experience I went through and then see the message I got from it. And then the Lord shared this with the Lord too. Wow. Should we just believe everybody? See, if, if one has the Spirit of God, it's easy to know. It's easy to know. Galatians chapter 5 tells us the fruit of the Spirit. So if the Holy Spirit is in you, number one thing I should see in your life is love. Love for God's people. That is the character of the Holy Spirit. Love. Love. So when you're against everybody and you say it's the Holy Spirit, everybody that doesn't agree with you has become an enemy, it's, 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 we, we, should, we should carefully look again whether what you have is the Holy Spirit. Because I'll tell you the truth. There are ministers who don't have the Holy Spirit. Oh yeah. There are people who do miracles without the Holy Spirit. How can you do miracles without the Holy Spirit? It's possible. It's very possible. Real miracles, you know, you know what I mean, real miracles. Yeah, real miracles. Not, I'm not talking about staged um, things people do and call miracles. Real miracles. Angels walk miracles. So an angel can walk with a man. And miracles will be done. Doesn't mean the Spirit of God is in that man. But there are things you need to learn. Praise <laughs> God. And yeah, that's why Jesus said on that day, I'll say to them, I never knew you and the fact that an angel is doing a work with you doesn't mean god knows you god only knows those whom he had given his spirit to. that's why no man can give you the holy spirit no man it's not given to any man it's not given to any man only god can give you the holy spirit so when one has the holy spirit in him we should look for the fruit of the holy spirit and the fruit of the holy spirit is love 
No, there are nine fruits of the Holy No, there are no nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. There is one fruit of the Holy Spirit. One, and it's love. Everything he listed in Galatians 2.22 is the quality of the fruit. Yeah. Goodness, gentleness, faith, self-control. It's, it's love is described. Just describing one fruit. Love. So when you have love, you'll be gentle with someone. When you have love, you'll be good towards them. When you have love, you, you have self-control towards them. So your life is controlled by love. So those are the things we should be looking out for more in ourselves. If I have the Holy Spirit in me and He is giving me this message I'm preaching, it's coming out in love. It's not coming out in hatred for another person. It's not coming out to attack another person. It's coming out, hey, 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 this is the truth. If we walk in this truth, it will bless every one of us. That's what God expects us to do. Praise God. Listen to me. Open your heart. Don't be limited by religion. Don't be limited by tradition. But let me tell you this. Be forceful when the Spirit of God is the one inspiring you. See? Because if He's the one, He's the one that will watch over you. He's the one that will keep you till the end. If you let Him go and trust in men, the same men will destroy your life. I say this and I leave these words with you. And I tell you, have a great weekend. God bless you. I'll see you on Monday. Bye.